Despite a wealth of information now available, there is still a stigma against bipolar disorder, and that even extends inside the church. But Reverend Cheryl McGraney is working to change that. Both she and her son were diagnosed as bipolar. We welcome Reverend McGraney, who is clergy president of the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance at the Chicago Loop Chapter, and the certified specialist as appointed by the Bishop Hee Soo Jung of the Northern Illinois Conference of the United Methodist Church. We also welcome Cheryl's husband, Pete McGraney. Their son, Dan, took his own life at age 23 because of bipolar disorder. And we also welcome Val, who is a regular attendee at the support group. Thank you all for coming in today and sharing your stories. Thank you. Pete, let's start with you. Could you share your family's story and a little bit about the history of your family members? Dan probably started suffering symptoms when he was in high school, um, his junior and senior year, but we really didn't um, pursue the diagnosis of it, et cetera. And yeah, he went off to college, had a first, great first year, um, and then I think during his second year as a sophomore at the University of Iowa, um, he really started experiencing um, anxiety, mm. very severe anxiety. Um, he went to the emergency room a couple times. Uh, he actually came home in the spring. And um, that's when we started to take him to um, seek professional help. We found a terrific therapist for him that he really hit it off well. And that's when we got the diagnosis that he had bipolar disorder. Um, and then it really from there was the um, wellness plan, if you will, the recovery uh, to deal with it, to figure out what was the right mix of medications and therapy and whatnot. And that was building up towards getting him back into school. We got a call about 5 a.m. and it was Dan. Uh, he asked me to come get him. He was living in an apartment about a mile and a half from us. Uh, he'd called, I went over, picked him up. Um, he was okay, but seemed a little distraught. Uh, didn't want to share with me in the car yet what, why he needed us there. When we got home, um, he described for Sherry and I that he was contemplating taking his own life, um, which was you know, very traumatic both for us and him. But the most important part there was he was asking for help. About four months later, uh, June 6th, when Dan did successfully take his life um, due to the bipolar disorder, and I think all of the professionals, his psychiatrist, his therapist, um, the group he was part of that was a big part of his life then, um, and some of the people he met in his group um, still keep in contact with Sherry and I, uh, all of them said, you know, it's never a guarantee, but no one saw it coming. It, right. it is that, from my perspective, that insidious of a disease mm -hmm. that you can hide it, you can protect others from it, but it still just tears at the individual. We are so sorry for your loss. Um, thank you thank for sharing you. Dan's thank story. You. And Cheryl, I'd like to hear a little from you. Bipolar disorder does not look the same on everyone. Um, right. what, what have been your struggles with it? What has been your experience with the disorder? Well, unlike Dan, I was diagnosed in my mid-40s. I'm 52, and mm. so um, I had kind of what we call kind of like a crash slash nervous breakdown in my mid-40s standing on the corner of Wacker and Madison, very public. Um, but I grew up with a lot of the symptoms. And, you know, in a farming community that uh, my parents were and the generations, mental illness were not words that were, you know, that were spoken, you know, spoken about. Mm -hmm. This is an illness that um, is a brain, brain disorder. And so... Um, I, I had the symptoms from uh, deep depression to the uh, manic symptoms of not sleeping, going for days um, without sleep and just, uh, you know, working like crazy. But, but that was all seemed like normal things mm. um, until about my mid-40s. And I'm also a severe migraine patient. And so my neurologist said to me, 
Cheryl, you have had excellent coping skills all your life and your brain chemistry all of a sudden, it changes. It just doesn't stay the same. And so your coping skills just didn't work you know, anymore. I couldn't concentrate at work. That's one of the, the primary symptoms is you, you just can't concentrate. Your mind is just revving so fast from one thing to another. Um, you talk extremely fast. Um, people really can't understand you on the manic side or you spend a lot of money. Um, I've kind of gotten off the internet and my credit card because I would go and spend a lot of money on the internet on my credit card. Or I would not be able to get out of bed and I would at church you know, have uh, the secretary there cancel all my meetings because I couldn't get out of bed. Val, can you share your experience with the support group and what are some of the benefits that you've really gotten from this group? Um, well, this is a disorder that I've had since I was about 11 years old mm. and I've tried every way to kind of fix myself um, by avoiding doctors, looking exclusively at doctors, the ups and downs, the, the ready to give up and throw the towel in when medication doesn't work. And this past September I had a bit of a crash. And after um, I was released from the hospital and really ready to focus on getting well, I just, I had a different outlook on it. And I realized that this is, it's okay for this to be your life, something that you need to kind of work through and live in wellness. Um, so I started looking at ways to integrate it in my life other than just the medicine I might have to take in the morning or the doctor appointment I might have to go to once a month or once every six months, depending how I'm doing. Um, and the first time I went, I thought, oh, this is, it's going to be weird. It's going to be cliche. You know, I'm going to, they're going to ask me, how do you feel? And it's not like that at all. P the people who go there know how you feel. Um, they sh are from all different backgrounds. They have all different stories to share. Mm -hmm. And just having that support of people who know mm -hmm. what it feels like, it's amazing. It really makes all the difference in the world. For family members of people who suffer from bipolar, what can you tell them? What, what can they give to you in order to be a good support system for you? Um, I think being open to the idea of a mental illness is number one because there are so many people out there who still see it as a character flaw mm -hmm. or even deny that it exists at all. And there's really nothing worse you can face than having someone tell you you're not sick you can fix yourself. Um, I think everyone can um, offer different degrees of help. Um, and if you can't be the number one person in that person's life as their support, that's okay. Um, as long as you're educated as to what the disease is, as long as you're willing to listen and willing to help in the ways that you can, that's really all, at least I can ask of someone. Cheryl, how has your faith worked its way into this scenario for you? What, what can people draw on in their faiths? Well, I think that, uh, first of all, I cannot say enough uh, positive things about having the pastoral support that we had in our immediate crisis mm. from the other pastors at Chicago Temple here in the Chicago Loop. For us, that got us through, I mean, the first few absolutely horrible, difficult days, you know, when our son died. So having that closeness with a pastor or with um, someone, you know, in your church who has a deep, mature faith, who can be there for you, um, just to sit next to you in the midst of the crisis and to know that that person is representing the love of Christ, just being there with us in our suffering, and that there is comfort, you know, there is um, compassionate uh, love that comes through other people, that God works through other people. Well, thank you so much for educating us um, on bipolar disorder. Cheryl, Pete, Val, thank you for sharing your stories and for being so open with us today. I'm Leanne Nolan for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries. Keep the faith.